What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Blue Blood Sports TV, back at y'all with another one. So it, it has now been revealed that undefeated three division world champion, superstar boxer, Javante Tank Davis, who is now 27 wins, no losses, no draws, 25 big wins by way of knockout. He is 27 years of age, uh, five foot five with a 67 inch arm reach. He took on and defeated uh, WBA lightweight title contender, Rolando Roley Romero, okay? In which Rolando Roley Romero is a stable mate of Javante Tank Davis. They both under Mayweather promotions. And Roley Romero, he sold the fight. 14 wins, no loss, and no draw. 12 wins by way of knockout coming into the fight. 26 years of age, 5'8", with a 68-inch uh, 60, uh, 60 arm reach. He talked his way into this fight. Big talk into this fight. But what's more interesting is this. Is that Javante Tank Davis got a brutal six-round knockout over Rolando Roley Romero, as I predicted. But Rolando Roley Romero was very close friends with former unified lightweight world champion, superstar boxer Teofimo Lopez. Okay? And um, Rolando Roley Romero was so confident and Teofimo Lopez's close friend was so confident that he was going to win the fight that Teofimo Lopez publicly told the world that he was betting $10,000 that Teofimo Lopez, that is, was betting $10,000 that Rolando Roley Romero was going to win against Javante Tank Davis and he was going to knock him out. So in the fifth round of the fight, you can visibly see Javante Tank Davis talking to somebody in the crowd and he's drawing back and forth as he's sitting on the stool in between rounds, okay? And it now has been revealed. Initially, I thought he was talking to his mom, but it has now been revealed that he was talking to Tiafima Lopez and he told Tiafima Lopez, you're about to lose your money. This is going into the sixth round. And this has been confirmed by Tiafima Lopez Sr., okay? Tiafima Lopez Sr. has stated that and confirm that uh, Tank Davis was talking to Tiafima Lopez and Tiafima Lopez was saying, I want to fight you next. Give me the opportunity. You know, uh, obviously he's campaigning for this fight. And, um, but clearly if he's asking for the fight next, clearly he wasn't confident that Roley was going to win the fight, right? Okay, so if he was confident that Roley was going to win the fight and he bet $10,000, on Roley Romero to win the fight, then why would he be campaigning for a fight with Tank Davis next? Clearly, he wasn't confident, right? And so, with that said, Tiafima Lopez Sr. says that Tiafima Lopez, who is now 16 wins, one loss, no draw, 12 wins by way of knockout, 24 years of age, 5 foot 8 with a 68 inch arm reach, he's coming off of a loss where he lost all his titles to George Cambosis Jr., okay, via split decision. That was back in November of this year. And so with that said, Tiafima Lopez Sr. says that Tank Davis turned and looked to him and said, you know, uh, you can get the same work and you're about to lose your money right now. So he was predicting that he was going to knock out, just like I did, Rolando Roley Romero going into the sixth round. Now, again, I thought that Tank was talking to his mom, okay? I, I thought that he said, you know, uh, I thought that he was saying something uh, to his mother, okay, but uh, they have confirmed that no, he wasn't talking to his mother, he was talking to uh, uh, Tiafimo Lopez, right? And he told Tiafimo Lopez, You can get this work as well, and you're about to lose your money right now. Watch this. And he delivered, he knocked out Rolando Roley Romero in that very next round, okay? Uh, Tiafimo Lopez versus Javante Tank Davis would, would have been a bigger fight when he was the champion, okay? Right now, Tiafimo Lopez, like I said, uh, in November, he lost his belt, okay? November 27th to George Cambosis, who's the newly crowned, unified, lightweight world champion, Australian star boxer, who's fighting undefeated WBC lightweight world champion, superstar boxer, Devin the Dream Haney, uh, next Saturday, this upcoming Saturday, uh, in Australia, June 4th in Australia, June 5th in, in the United States, right? They're a day 
uh, uh, June 4th in the United States, June 5th in Australia, they're a day ahead of us. So it'll be Sunday in Australia and it's gonna be Saturday here in the States, okay? Um, so with that said, they're fighting for undisputed. Uh, Tiafima Lopez got shocked. The world was shocked. George Cambosis beat him, dropped him uh, and beat him. He faced adversity, he dropped George Cambosis, but ultimately George Cambosis, he got the victory. Uh, so with that said, it would have been a bigger fight, you know, as he was the champion and he had a lot of buzz. Now he got to get back in that win column. And now Tiafimo Lopez is talking about going to junior welterweight. Uh, and there's a few names that's being mentioned uh, and linked to Tiafimo Lopez, you know. Um, but with that said, you know, um, we don't know uh, what's going to be the next move for Tiafimo Lopez. And Javante Tank Davis has confirmed that he's re-signing with Mayweather Promotions, uh, Floyd Mayweather, Lennon LB CEO, uh, so and PBC. He's with Premier Boxing Champion, founder advisor Al Heyman, and he's and he's still staying with Showtime, Showtime President of Sports, Steven Espinosa. So again, Tiafimo Lopez is with ESPN top ranking Bob Arum. So uh is Bob Arum going to be willing to make that fight? Who knows, right? Uh only uh uh Bob Arum knows if he's going to be willing to make that fight. And the thing about it is, is that Javante Tank Davis is clearly the A-side. So it behooves Teofimo Lopez to get back in the win column, uh, you know, have a big fight at Junior Welterweight, as he stated that he wants. Uh, and then, you know, um, down the road, that could be a fight. Uh, entertain, entertainment value, I love the fight, right? Uh, I think Javante Tank Davis wins that fight. Uh, I think that Teofimo Lopez, he struggles with southpaws with their straight left hand. Uh, we saw that with Lomachenko because he has a tendency uh, to stand flat-footed at times. And when he stands flat-footed like he did with George Cambosis, he got counted, he got clipped, he got dropped. Okay, George Cambosis is not a southpaw, but he has this tendency that he just makes up his mind to stand in the southpaw stands, uh, in a shoulder roll stands, I mean, in, in a southpaw stand, in a shoulder roll stands, and he's, and he's looking for one big punch, one big counter punch, and it's not there, okay? He attempted that with George Cambosis, and that's why he lost. Uh, when he fought uh, Vasil Lomachenko, two-time Olympic gold medalist, three-division champion, former unified lightweight world champion, he won that fight convincingly. First seven rounds, I thought Teofimo Lopez clearly won. But then eight, nine, 10, and 11, he stood in the shoulder roll, flat-footed in the center of the ring, and he let Lomachenko just have his way. And Lomachenko, at one point in time, I'm like, in the 10th round, I'm like, Lomachenko looked like he getting ready to stop Teofimo Lopez. It was looking so bad, right? Um, and then in the 12th round, he decided to go back to what was working the first seven rounds and pressure Lomachenko, move around, and then he clearly won the 12th round. It looked like he was getting ready to stop Lomachenko in the 12th round. But again, he has this tendency, I don't know if it's because he struggled to make weight at 135, uh, and so he's trying to save his energy, and he's fatiguing, he's getting tired, Okay, and um, you know, he decided to, you know, preserve his energy by just standing flat footed in the center of the ring and looking to counter punch his opponents. Doesn't work for him because he gets the 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 short end of the stick in that position, um, because his opponents always have more success when he's doing it. George Cambosis, Lomachenko. So if he does that against Javante Tank Davis, who has way more power than Cambosis and Lomachenko, uh but is just as quick as they are with quicker feet. And he's a southpaw, you know, I just don't see Tiafimo Lopez looking for one punch, walking down Javante Tank Davis. That's not gonna work. I, I would f highly favor Javante Tank Davis to win that fight. Um, and I think that he could possibly stop Tiafimo Lopez. I think it would be a stoppage. I don't know if he just knocks him out outright like he did Roly Romero, but I think he could get a stoppage because the work rate of Tank Davis in, in a fight where he don't have to look for his opponent, I think that would be bad for Teofimo Lopez. But Teofimo Lopez does have power. He does have boxing ability. He's athletic. He's far more fundamentally sound than Roly Romero. Uh, he's far more skilled than Roly Romero. Uh, he has a better jab. He has a higher ring IQ. So it's a much different competitive fight against uh, Rolanda Roly, against Javante Tank Davis than Roly Romero. But ultimately, I think Tank would, would get the victory. So it's interesting that out of all the people in the crowd, <laughs> Javante Tank Davis ring IQ, he located and found 
uh, George Cambosis Jr., excuse me, uh, Tiafimo Lopez, who bet against him 10,000 on his friend Roly, and he went back and forth and told him, listen, watch this, I'm getting ready to stop your boy right now. That's very interesting. Uh, you know, you have to have a very high ring I IQ to be able to scope out the crowd. Now, obviously, you can see people in the crowd and you could, you know, uh, you could locate and pinpoint who's who, uh, identify who's who. But the fact that in that moment, he realized Tiafima Lopez, who bet against me, is sitting behind me. And then he goes at Tiafima Lopez. That speaks volumes. Uh, you know, Floyd Mayweather used to do that. He could hear everything. He could hear the commentators, announcers, crowd, you know. Uh, one time he was talking about the Patriots in the Super Bowl, and he bet on the Patriots to win the Super Bowl, right? Uh, so with that said, in, in the middle of the ring, he's betting on the Patriots to to win the Super Bowl, okay? Uh, so with that said, you know, um, that that was, you know, uh, uh, that's impressive. Again, I thought he was talking to his mother uh, in the crowd, but it turns out that he was talking to uh, Tia Fima Lopez, and that's that's highly impressive in my opinion. Uh, so there's talks that you know Tia Fima Lopez, uh, excuse me, uh, Javante Tank Davis could possibly fight uh, Michelle uh, R Rivera Zaza Ali, you know, uh, in his next fight. Who is the WBA mandatory challenger? Um, but I believe Roley was the mandatory challenger as well, you know. Uh, so. Um, you know, uh, that that looks like that could be a possibility. Rivera could be a possibility for that fight. Um, obviously, Tank, he made mention of names. Uh, he's the mandatory challenger for Devin Haney, George Cambosis Jr. winner, okay? So that could be a, a, a possibility. But again, for those fights, those are ESPN fighters, okay? So now you're asking the PBC, Showtime, to do business, Mayweather Promotions do business with Top Rank and Bob Arum. I just don't see that happening right now. Uh, so I like Regis Progray at 140. Uh, that's a big fight. They both been drawing back and forth. I also like uh, the Rivera fight. Rivera is relatively unknown. The hardcore boxing fans know who he is, but he's relatively unknown. So with that said, you know, we got to see what's next for Javante Tank Davis, but don't expect to see Javante Tank Davis versus Teofimo Lopez. But that's all I got for y'all. Make sure you hit the like button. Drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know what y'all think. Y'all already know what it is. It's your boy, Blue, Blue Blood Sports TV. Hate, like, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Hit the bell icon to get all the new notifications. Follow me on Instagram at Blue Blood Sports TV, all in one word. Y'all already know what it is. Shout out to the entire LDBC. Shout out to New Media. Shout out to Black Media Row. Make sure you like and share the videos. That's all I got for y'all. Peace.